Hi folks, a year ago we assembled such a small walking robot. You can watch the video on the pop-up from the above. This year we decided to assemble one more, just a little bigger. A link to the project page where you can find all the 3D models and a list of accessories, as always, is in the description. All details for this walking robot are printed on our old Delt robot. So let's begin. All details of the base and legs are printed in black PLA plastic with 30% coverage. Also required 4 aluminum tubes with a diameter of 8mm and a length of 180mm. 12 bearings with flange F623ZZ. 12 MG996R servos with a 180 degrees rotation angle. HC06 Bluetooth module. Arduino Nano and expansion board. 20 amps down converter. M2 and M3 screws and nuts. 4 can lithium polymer battery with a good current output of 1500 mAh. The base will have to be assembled in two parts, since the whole version doesn't fit on a standard desktop size of 200 by 200 mm, but it still is in the archive. To be honest, we didn't print it, and perhaps it will need to be strengthened, because the tubes are no longer used there. Nevertheless, this will not be a problem, because we posted all the models not only in STL format, but also in step format, which is very easy to edit. We used epoxy glue for gluing the tubes and joining the parts together. We also glued a plate in the center of the base. It will significantly strengthen the joint and there will be something to attach the wires to, if necessary. Now about servo drives. This time we bought expensive ones. It seems like it's the original Tower Pro. The name is even debossed in the case. There are MG996 servos that are cheaper, but they truly are fakes. Some rubbish is written on them instead of the Tower Pro name. As you can see, the servos are very similar. Let's take the cheaper one. Firstly, there are no bearings, everything is on the bushings. Secondly, in the gearbox, which should be completely metal, there is a freaking plastic gear. In addition, many people complain that lower power engines come across cheap servos, and due to this, servos do not provide the claimed 9 kilograms. Now, we will analyze the original servo. Here, all the gears are made of steel, and there are already two bearings, one in the cover, the second under the large gear. By the way, at first, we were embarrassed that it looked like made of aluminum. We checked the official site, found the servos, and there, they look the same. It's original. Well, looking ahead, we will say that these are good servos, there were no problems with them. They just as always lack good lubrication, therefore we went through all the servos with graphite grease, which was at hand. Arduino Nano is used as the brains of the robot. To connect all the servos and the Bluetooth model to it, you'll need an expansion card. However, the converters on such boards are quite weak. Each servo can consume up to 1.5 amperes at maximum load, and we will have 12 of them. Therefore, we decided to use this 20 amp converter to be on the safe side. Of course, the servos here will not work fully. Nevertheless, we still doubt that this cheap converter is capable of delivering the declared 20 amperes. Therefore, it's better to keep some in reserve. We decided to power all the servos directly, connecting all the contacts with a thick wire. Again, or sized and for certainty. The power on this board is common, so the same wires will power the Arduino Nano and the Bluetooth module. Nothing else needs to be connected. To isolate the compounds, we filled everything with hot glue. Despite the apparent massiveness, the base weights very little, only about 150 grams. It's a framework wired from the outside. The thickness of the outer walls is only 1 mm. Thus, the base looks solid from the outside, the electronics will be protected, and thanks to aluminum tubes, we get excellent rigidity for low weight. On the converter, you can immediately set the 5V, which is exactly what is needed for the operation of servo drives, the Bluetooth module and the Arduino Nano. The second knob on the converter is for regulating the current strength. There is also a power switch, which we will use. In the center of the base, there will be a lithium polymer battery, which doesn't like to be heated. Therefore, just in case, we decided to stick a shield that will protect the battery from the radiator on the converter. Looking ahead, we'll say that there is no special need for this. The converter doesn't work at full power, and the radiators are almost cold. Install the servos. Under each servo drive, you need to press in the M3 nut.
We proceed to the assembly of the legs. We use a composite version of the third part of the leg with the rubber tip, which is printed with a BF gummy filament. The material is flexible and looks like a very dense rubber. If you have no desire to be bothered with this, then there is a whole option at the archive. However, the fact that this is the tip of the foot from PLA is quite slippery, which means that some servers will be under additional load, just so that the legs do not move apart under the weight of the robot. This of course is not critical, they would stand, but still. Set the first part of the leg. From above, it will be screwed to the servo through a rocking bar, and from below, it will be necessary to install a bearing. We put an M3 washer under the bearing and fasten it with the M3 by 8 screw. All joints on all four legs are assembled in the same way. The wires of four servers on the hind legs have to be prolonged. On the remaining servers, factory cables are enough. Now it's time to connect the servers to the expansion board. For this, pins from D2 to D13 are used. You can see the connection order on the screen. Now we take Arduino Nano and connect it to the computer. There are several folders in the archive with firmware, but now we need the legs in its sketch. Verify that the board, processor and port are correct, then load. We install the board in its place and apply power. Upon initialization, all servers will be in the middle position. Now it's time to install the rocking bars. They are screwed perpendicular to the body of the servos, which gives the front and rear pair of legs the shape of the Russian letter B. Bluetooth module is connected to the upper wire strip of contacts here, according to this diagram. Again, connect the nano board to the computer and load the main sketch. By the way, there is a folder with the necessary libraries that need to be connected in advance. Please note that this code was written a long time ago and in the latest versions of the Arduino IDE there may be problems with it. We installed the old version 1.6.1 and everything works without problems. Great, everything works! Now it's time to fix the rocking bars, because now they are loose. For this, we'll need M2 screws with nuts. First, you need to go through with a 2mm drill in the first and last holes of the rocking bar. We decided to remove the stickers, because they are purple and do not harmonize here. We were in such a hurry to assemble the thing, that we mixed up the right and left middle part of the leg. It should look like this. The recess should be on the inside, so that nothing rests when folded. For everything to work as it should, it's necessary to ensure that the legs are assembled equally. For example, the first parts of the legs on the right should be in parallel to each other and perpendicular to the body in this position. We take a step forward and now everything is the same on the left. The problem is in the slots on the shafts of the servos and inside the rocking bars. They are slightly different from servo to servo. In addition to the two-way rocking bar and the disc, two complete rocking bars of the right size are included with the servo. So after assembly of the robot there will be a whole set. We would advise you to spend a little time and choose a rocking bar for each servo so that the legs are assembled and installed symmetrically. Please note that on cheap servos rocking bars are slightly different in size and for them you'll have to edit the first and second parts of the legs. Let's get down to the body of our wen. Initially we wanted to print it with this silver PLA, glue it and not process it in any way. But in the end we decided to use ABS plastic. Firstly it's lighter. Secondly the ABS body can be 
relatively easily painted. We are far from experts in this matter, but rather beginners, therefore we'll not make much of this in great detail. This is not a guide for painting printed models, we just decided to practice given the opportunity. Nevertheless, the ability to work with an airbrush is a very useful skill in our hobby. To get started, we glued the model. And then polished it with the sandpaper. Then covered with the so-called ABS juice. This is ABS plastic dissolved in acetone. Drilled headlight and side lamps. And again polished with sandpaper. We closed the seams with the car putty and polished it again. Then we pasted the missing elements, such as the badge and door hinges, which were printed on the photopolymer 3D printer. Here it's necessary to tell you folks that we didn't draw a body model ourselves and bought a ready design. It was not expensive and is just awful. Somehow it was possible to fix it, scale it to the desired size, cut it into parts and add attachment points to the base. But some details are still missing and editing 3D models in STL format is very problematic. When everything was ready, we airbrushed the body with ordinary grey primer from a can. We will paint the body in two colors. The first is a yellow caution signal color. We had to apply several layers to cover the grey primer. It's still better to apply a white primer under light colors. Done! Now we cover everything we need with paper type, after covering the painted areas with a couple of layers of varnish. We decided to make windshields from transparent sheet plastic. We cut out pieces of the required size and glue them on the inside with super glue. Then we had to cover the windshield from the inside and outside with liquid plastic, which helped to hide fingerprints, super glue, and fingerprints in super glue. Transparent window do not look very good, mainly because the inside of the body is empty. So we decided to airbrush them from the inside with this aluminum color. Nothing more suitable was found at hand. It turned out something like that. A little crooked, of course, but the thing that in this case it's even good. This will add um, representation similarities to the original vehicle. Yes, for sure, we're not bunglers, it's part of the design. It remains to make the backlight. For this, 3 and 5 mm red and yellow LEDs are required and a couple of white ones for headlights and 100 ohm resistors. We will leave a link to the calculator in the description, which will help you to calculate the resistor value starting from the working voltage of the LEDs, the current consumed by it and the voltage of the power source. You will also need the headlights and side lamps, which we printed with a transparent filament called Watson, also from Best Filament. Here's the final result. We fix the lights from the inside with hot glue, so it will be easier to get them to replace the LEDs if necessary. It remains only to fasten the mounts. At the last moment, we decided to install these shields painted in body color and with marker lights on feet. We didn't print new legs, we just drilled the necessary holes. After that, of course, we fixed the 3D molds of the legs, now there are several options in the archive. We hid all the wires in a braid, so that everything looks decent. By the way, all the LEDs are connected in parallel and are powered by 5 volts on the expansion board. Yes, with such quantity it would be possible to combine serial and parallel connections, but then other resistors and a step-up converter would be required. We decided not to complicate things and just used what was at hand. Finally, everything is ready, the robot is fully assembled.
Now about remote control. The robot is controlled by Bluetooth from a smartphone. In the description there is a link to the application. It's called Bluetooth SPP Pro. We scan, find our HCO6 module in the list and connect. The first time you connect you may be asked for a password. Usually it's 1234 or 4 zeros. We configured the control button something like this. We select the button set in the drop-down menu to configure them. A list of all commands is in the main sketch. The first digit is the command number. The second is the number of repetitions. Characters are entered with spaces. One click sends one command. Also, for full manual control you can add for example 90 degree rotations. We indicate four repetitions for the command. Exactly this much is needed for the robot to rotate 90 degrees. Unfortunately, we couldn't measure the current consumed, because we have only a pocket multimeter available. If you are interested, then later we'll measure everything and supplement the description on the project page. In the meantime, we have to get out of this mess and do a visual test. We made it spin on the spot for an hour. During this time, the battery voltage dropped from 16 to 14.7 volts. So this 4 can lithium polymer battery for 1500 mAh is enough for at least 1.5 to hours of operation, and even more in standby mode. This, in general, is an excess power for such a model, and smaller batteries can be used. But as for us, the result is impressive. The desktop is rather tight for this fella, so for a change, we'll go outside and see what this thing is capable of. After all tests, we can state the following specifications. Walking UAZ, scale 1 to 16, gross weight is 1980 grams, maximum speed 0.25 km per hour, cruising range 500 meters. This is how the project turned out. We have long wanted to implement it and are very glad that everything worked out. All the same, this is our first self-designed walking robot. If you liked it, then do not forget to like this video, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. There is still a lot of interesting projects that will come in the future. Good luck to everyone and see you soon!